All right, what's going on, guys? So this is going to be episode two of our podcast. Um, first of all, first things first, we are in the car. We are leaving South Carolina. Um, we recorded the podcast last night and a little bit this morning, and we weren't on the same page with it. And it just it was kind of junky. It was not, a cluster. Not the call, not the quality we're wanting to put out. So we are going to try to redo it. I know there's going to be a little bit of background noise from the road and the traffic and all that. I do apologize, but. We just listened. We were listening to it. We decided it wasn't the quality we wanted to produce, and we wanted to redo it. While the topics we were discussing are still fresh in our head. Um, first things first. The topics are going to be first of all why we were in South Carolina, why we were, we're actually in North Carolina now, why we were on our way home. Secondly, um, what breeds we hunt and why. And thirdly, it's going to be our top three things to do with your coonhound puppy when you first get them and they can apply to really any dog but this being a coon hunting podcast uh you know our following being coon hunters we're going to be top three things to do with your puppy when you get it so and my beautiful co-host jade is with me also because we do everything together we can't do anything apart so i'm going to turn it over to her and let her tell you guys what we were doing in south carolina so we were in South Carolina to get a puppy. Um, she is a red bone puppy and she is a she, which is something I usually don't get. Um, I'm not really that big in to female dogs. I've just it's never really been my thing, but I do plan on having my own bloodline when it comes to hounds. So I kind of need a female for that. Um, so yeah. She is, what, 10 weeks old? Yes. So she's 10 weeks old. So her parents are um, Outlaw Tatum's Amos and Mouth of the South. I don't know her, like, official pedigree or whatever name. But um, Amos, he is a littermate to G-Man. I don't know a whole lot about either one of them I I don't really know what made me decide to get her like usually I have a reason for why I get a puppy and I don't really have one for her it just like, felt right yeah like I don't which we didn't seek this dog out um, her breeder actually messaged Matt and you know, was saying how he had some puppies and this was the bloodline and we talked about it and I don't know, it just seemed like something we really wanted to do. So we made arrangements and drove down to South Carolina. But yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about her. Uh, well, I will say from the, I wouldn't call it the management position of all the socials, but I control all the posting and all that stuff, so I will say that at the time you're listening to this video, or I'm sorry, listening to this podcast, the vlog from the whole trip is live on our channel, our YouTube channel. If you don't know it, it's just Rudd Outdoors, R-U-T-T, Outdoors, on YouTube, and yeah, that, that's us. That's where you'll find us. Um, so we, we vlogged it and all that. We're actually still in the process of vlogging. But we decided where we were going to redo this podcast. That we got four hours and forty-five minutes till we get home. So, what better time to? And really, this is what kind of sparked us up and wanting to do podcast is we will literally we will literally drive six hours somewhere and never turn the radio on. Like we will literally just talk about our dogs, our plans, dogs that are you know things that are going on in the coon hunting world, big hunts, you know, up and coming dogs dogs of the past just just things of that nature and we talk about other things too but yeah but i mean it's our life doesn't revolve around coon, coon dogs but at the same time that's typically a why we're traveling and b that's that's what we do we, we you know we can hunt four to five nights a week so it's a big part of our lives so we kind of got the idea literally we were coming back from georgia our last road trip we yeah, got the we idea were, we were wanting to listen to a coon hunting podcast yes yes so I hope this audio comes out a lot better than, than I'm thinking it will. 
because a lot of these podcasts would would be uh, recorded literally in situations like this where we're driving home from whether it be a hunt whether it be you know uh, just a road trip where we go hunting or whether we're traveling to get a dog Um, we're hoping that you know we can do more traveling in the future with either getting uh, making connections and and all that with with these coon hounds so I hope you guys can can understand the, the road noise and, and all that and the, you know not the crisp quality audio that you know a lot of your podcasts have but um if you guys can excuse that and stick around and listen to this we will really appreciate it and we hope that we can talk about something that you're interested in so i didn't mean to go off on a tan- tangent about that but i just wanted to make it you know give us a little bit more about where we didn't just come up with this you know what i mean it wasn't just a random thought what we're doing right now kind of inspired us to do the podcast and that's why we wanted to record one right now does that make sense yeah it makes sense okay so where are we at what, what, were, you, what were you saying i don't remember we're talking about i don't know what, what were you talking about i don't know so anyway are, are you have anything else to say about karma her name <laughs> her name is lights out bad karma yeah, so. I know that's a great name. Jay, Jay I came up, with, came up with that name. I was so I was actually going to name her uh, Katana, but a buddy of ours has a female dog whose name is Katana, and we didn't know it at the time. So I was like, "Well, got to change the name now." So I don't know. And it's nothing like when we say a buddy. Like literally, we hunt with two people on the regular. I wouldn't even say it's on the regular. It's one of these two people. Yeah, like, so... the odds of us hunting with that dog in one week are pretty high. And, you know, it really just depends on him. But, like, the odds of us hunting with that dog while we're hunting karma are pretty high. It's not like it's a, a guy we know three states over. You know what I mean? Like, it, and he didn't even say that. Like, it's not that big of a deal. It's just, you know... I just feel like if we're... When we do hunt with him and... She's she's older than Karma, but there's probably going to be a time when they're hunting together. If they have the same name, yeah, they're both going to answer that name. And it's just going to be a cluster. So, yeah. and I like Bad Karma better, honestly. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. So, that being said, let's talk about what breeds we hunt and why we hunt them. Do you want to go first? Let me go first. <laughs> go first. Sorry, I was yawning. All right, so I am the black and tan man of the Rudd Outdoors. All the black and tans are because of me. Um, if it was up to me, I'd own about 3,000 black and tans, but I don't have the time nor the funds to um, furnish the space. Them. Or, yeah, or the space to furnish that. So um, right now we have, in order from oldest to youngest, we do have Tree Singing Sally. She's about, go, she's going on two and a half. Um, she is a Lyman Licky dog. She is the, well, I wouldn't say she's not, she's not the first black and tan I had because I got rid of a dog, um, last fall, but she is the oldest black and tan that I have and I've had the longest. Um, like I said, she is a Lyman Licky dog. We've been through a lot with her. Um, I'll go more into that here in just a minute, but we have Tree Singing Sally. We have Hard Hammer and Hercules which if you guys follow us on Facebook or our YouTube channel, you'll you'll probably know more about Hercules than any of the Black and Tans because he is my 13-month-old male dog that I am pushing to be a competition dog. Sally is a great dog. She's a good pleasure dog, but that's just that. She is a pleasure dog. She doesn't get in a hurry. She, you know, she might go a week without treating a coon. Um, she's just not, not the drive and energy level and really the desire to hunt that I would want for a competition dog. Um, So Hercules is the dog that I'm pushing for competitions. And then I have my little female. Uh, When I say little, I mean she is little. She's about as broad as she is tall. Um, Lights out Izzy. Um, We made a video on Izzy back probably about five-ish months ago when we went and got her she's seven months old we've had her since she was 
eight to ten weeks old. Uh, I don't know exactly how old she, she was when we got her, but uh, she's my little female. We haven't done too much with her on film, um, but she's right there at that threshold. She's right there, ready to, to jump into the the whole hunting game. Um, it's not that we haven't done much with her on film. It's we usually don't have the time to work with them together. So usually it's one of us working with the pups and trying to film it at the same time, and it's not a good quality. Yes. So yes. And and guys, like this is this is not me bragging, um, but I work anywhere from sixty-four to seventy-two hours a week. You know, Saturdays and Sundays I work sixteen-hour shifts. I hunt usually a lot of times Sunday night when I get off work because I, I work evening shifts. So when I get off work at eleven p.m., I usually come home and load the dogs up. So a lot of time, a lot of weeks I'm hunting Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. Um, Friday night, I go home and go straight to bed because I get up at, I gotta be at work at 7 a.m. So I work 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. on the weekends and 3 to 11 throughout the week. Uh, right now, we're usually we're trying to post two YouTube videos a week on Mondays and Fridays, and now we're doing the podcast on Wednesdays. So it's not that you know we're not doing, it's just it's hard for us to find the time to do it together because right now, Jade is working four to five twelves a week or she's a nurse so it's just like we're busy and I don't want that to be an excuse you know we're not too busy it's just sometimes we got to pick you know do I spend 30 minutes working with this pup or you know or do I spend 15 minutes working with her and 15 minutes trying to get it on video so if, if there's some stuff that you guys don't see you know and I've even promised it in the past and guys, I really apologize for that, but you got to bear with us a little bit. Um, but I'm getting off on a on a rant like I always do. Yes, you are. So, That's my three. You got Tree Singing Sally, Heart Hammer and Hercules, and Lights Out Izzy. Um, what got me into black and tans, honestly, and if you guys are <laughs> looking for some, you know, big, you know, um, sentimental or um, amazing story, this is not it. Um, so when I was a kid, um, growing up in a uh, rural area, a lot of boys I know and went to school with coon hunted. And... Uh, they, were all, they all had walker dogs, most of them that, well actually, I can't say all of them, but 95% of them that still hunt have walker dogs, uh, but I wanted a coon hunt, um, but you know, I work at the same plant that my dad does, uh, he never really was into the whole coon hunting thing, so he didn't do it, um, my grandpa on my mom's side coon hunted, but he passed away when I was really young, so he wasn't doing it when when I remember what I remember of him um so it just really wasn't an option for me um you know it just it's how the cookie crumbles you know well 
I remember, I remember, I was sitting in the back pew of the church one Sunday evening when I, you know, should have been listening to the preacher, uh, scrolling through Facebook, and I was probably 12, 13 years old, and this, this is back when you could openly rehome um, dogs and cats and stuff on Facebook. There was like groups for it, like pages for it. It was a, you know, a good thing. Well. I was scrolling through there. I was on my mom's phone. I didn't have my own phone. I was scrolling through my mom's phone on Facebook. And I come across these free coonhound puppies. Well, they were within an hour or so from, from home. And I got to begging. I got to pleading. I got to promising. I got to talking. I was a salesman when it come to wanting one of these dogs. So, I got mom on board with me. You know, I didn't have didn't really have a dog at the time. I had, had several dogs when I was a kid, but nothing ever really... You know, only one really panned out when I was a young, young. Uh, he, had, he had then passed and all that. So I got to beg and got to plead and got to promise. And, you know, I'll do all these chores and everything, which I probably didn't do. Looking back, I was a little, I wasn't a very good kid. I wasn't a bad kid. I just wasn't a good kid. But anyway, I got mom on my side. Mom talked to dad. Dad, you know, well, they're free. As long as you get a male dog, I don't care. So I... Had mom message the guy. Long story short, we go way out in the boonies, West Virginia. I mean, out in the sticks. Banjos had quit playing 20 miles ago. I mean, we were out there. So, pull up. There was one male dog left, and it's a black and tan. So, we pick him, take him home. You know, I'm in hot cotton. I mean, I am just as happy as it could be. Get, and the dog don't have a name yet, so... I remember when I named this dog, I'll tell you about the little redneck kid I was. I'm making a fried bologna sandwich in the kitchen. I've got either my mom or my sister's phone in the window because we didn't have Wi-Fi. Because it just, it wasn't an option where we lived. It's really still not where, where mom and dad's house is. Um, or the farm is, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I had my phone, or the phone I was using in the window, watching YouTube, Ron White, Tater Salad Story frying my bologna, you know, everything, making my sandwich, and I, now I hear the tater salad story, and I'm thinking, you know what, tater, tater it is, so I named this poor dog tater, um, got him started in, uh, coon hunting, you know, uh, he was about six months or so, we trapped a coon, showed it to him, he went absolutely nuts, um, and, you know, ignorance on my part, we literally, dump you know just let the coon out and he fought the coon and killed it um it's obviously not how we do things now looking back it's a wonder that dog didn't get killed because he was just a pup but i remember it was a fight and i think that's why we don't do it now because it was such a bad experience for me when i was when i was younger that that's not that's not how we do it anyway killed the coon he was doing great and then just with things happened me being young and dumb he got off on off game, you know, he ran loose at the farm, so he would go off and he'd run deer and he'd treat possums and all that, and he kind of just beco- ended up becoming a farm dog, which he was very good at. He wasn't much of a coon dog, but he was a tree dog. He treated anything from cats to coons to possums, even treated a snake one time, so he was just a tree dog. He was a good dog. He was dumber than a box of hammers, but he was a good dog. And, like I said, he was a black and tan, so that's what got me into black and tans. The very last coon he ever treed that I know of is when I had a walker dog last summer. Uh, in August of last year, he, uh, he did what old dogs do, and he just went off on a hunting trip in the woods, and he didn't come back. So, uh, But this is in probably July, June or July of last year, 2020. I had loaded up my walker dog that I had at the time boomer and took him down there and when tater heard my truck coming around the road because you know my truck's kind of loud he ran out of the barn <laughs> ran up on the hillside literally right on the edge of the yard and treated a coon it was kind of funny because i got boomer out of the dog box walked him across the yard tater come up come up tree and you know i just happened to shine a light up there and saw the eyeballs so we took boomer back put him in the dog box and, and that was it um, but in, re- in reality, that's the only reason I hunt black and tan. Well, I can't say the only reason. I like their mouth. I like their accuracy. You know, I'd rather have, you know, 
more coons than less trees than vice versa um i don't care that they're slow i don't care that they're cold nosed or whatever whatever you know whatever you guys want to say or not necessarily you guys but you know the black and tan haters want to say uh that don't bother me sally's a good dog herc's a good dog i think izzy's gonna be a good dog izzy's either gonna be my best dog or she's not gonna mount to nothing she's 100 mile everywhere she goes but that's it i mean i i hope you guys weren't expecting some big you know awesome sentimental story of why i hunt black and tans but i miss tater 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 was goofy he he was a good dog he uh, treated me every time he saw me <laughs> he would jump up on her and start treeing uh he'd get excited uh, he was old gray faced if i can find the pictures jay took um i'll post them on something i'll find something and i'll, I'll talk about tater he was um, so sweet he was a good boy um but, oh, and the reason we picked Izzy, um, I forgot to, to tell this, too. So, Tater had a big white spot on his chest. And when Clint, um, Izzy's breeder, posted the, the litter for sale, he had two females, maybe, maybe two females left out of what they weren't picked from, you know, the, the breeding, you know, the breeders or whatever. Uh, and he made a note that one of them had a white spot on their chest. And... You know, looking back, Tater had a white spot on his chest, and that's really why we picked her. I mean, yeah. she—I mean, don't get me wrong; she was, in our opinion, she was the better looking of the two females. But you know, the white—you know—he he made a note about it because a lot of your quote-unquote purebred black and tans, you know, that's not a desirable thing. It's kind of fifty-fifty. I've heard some arguments that you know your black and tans with the white spot on your chest go back to old blood, you know. There, there's, it's a topic in the black and tan world, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that's that's kind of why we picked her, cause cause old Tater had that that uh, white spot on his chest. And man, I could I could make a whole podcast on Tater, and I might do it eventually. Maybe get call my buddy uh, Tyler, that he, he pretty much lived with us uh, when one summer when we were in high school, and we done some stuff with that dog, and he was a good time. He was a really good dog, and uh, he'll always go down as one of them good dogs. Um, like I said, he wasn't much of a coon dog. He's a heck of a tree dog. He wasn't much of a good coon dog. So, yeah, that's it. That's that's why I uh, that's why I hunt black and tans. Um, found I got one when I was a kid. Fell in love with it. Got another one. Fell in love with it. And now I mean, I'm I don't them all if I could. So that's it. You wanna you wanna go? Yeah. So I hunt red bones. Um, my papa he recently passed away uh, about three years ago um when my dad was younger I don't know exactly how old this was before 97 probably way before 97 I'm sure my dad was probably a teenager um but he did have a red bone and a red tick uh their names were Pete and John so from what I've heard obviously I never met the dogs it was way before my time they were just, they were really good dogs. My papa absolutely adored them. Uh, to hear my dad tell it, those were my papa's favorite kids. Um, which is funny to me because, you know, growing up, my papa was never an animal person. He, they never had a dog. They never had a cat. Like, that's just not something they did. So, to hear even my memo talk about how much he loved those dogs, it just, it cracks me up. But anyway, um, yeah, so he had Pete and John. Um, he absolutely adored him, and I don't know, it's just, I kept hearing my dad and my memo, you know, whenever we would talk about memories and things that we had of Papa, Pete and John would always be brought up. So when me and Matt got together, and I don't even know why we started coon hunting, like when we decided that's what we were gonna do, I was laid off. Was that why? Yeah, I uh, I got laid off uh, due to the um, the pandemic, and um, yeah, I was laid off. We was down at Brock and Alyssa's house, and Brock's like, "When you guys gonna get your coon dog? When you guys gonna get your coon dog? When you guys gonna get your coon dog?" And actually, the black and tan that I sold, um, Hank, um, you know, Brock talked me into it, and I I was like, "You know what? I got this buddy I know." I mean, we weren't super close by any means, but I got the boy I know, and uh, he's a big coon hunter, so, 
me let me holler at him and uh so as, you know i had like i said i had tater he was like and i still had tater at the time yeah um i said you know it was peewee i said hey peewee i said you know anybody's got a you know a coon dog to get rid of i said something cheap you know i'm not working right now he said buddy he said i got a black and tan i know about it's free yep and i went and got hank and then i traded a john boat a 14 foot john boat for um boomer he's a walker dog uh, i don't have no idea how old the dog was i was told told he was you know two going on three and i actually gave the dog away later on gave the way, dog away to brock brock took him to the vet have him you know checked up on and the vet said he was like eight so yeah. dog didn't have papers he was supposedly a um he was supposed to be half mojo and then a quarter stylish and a quarter clover um but for all i know he was you know he looked like a walker dog don't get me wrong he's big big head walker dog but he could have had chihuahua in for all i know so um yeah i ended up giving away traded that 14 foot john boat for him and uh uh oh a uh, astro 320 and a t5 collar which i wish i wouldn't have sold the t5 collar uh but we actually that's when we got sally too because i got sally for you because I wanted to get you a dog, and it turned out that Sally was my girl after that, and that's kind of what started it all. That's when we ended up going to Indiana to buy a Doc. Pretty Boy Doc Holiday. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't know if you mentioned it at the beginning or not, but actually Pete was the red bone and John was the red tick, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pete was the red bone. John was the red tick. Um, to hear my dad tell it, Pete was gritty he was a kill dog i mean he was he would uh pull himself up the tree he didn't tree jack but he would get so excited and i don't know just ready to have the coon knocked out to him that he would just pull himself up the tree and uh he would chew rings around the tree john he was a little more laid back you know, he would bark and get excited, but nothing like Pete would. And uh, it's funny to hear my dad tell it. Uh, whenever they would shoot the coon out, Pete would, you know, grab by the neck, ready to kill it, and John would be over there biting his ass. So, I don't know. It's just, it's funny to hear things like that. But, yeah, so, hey. Sally was originally supposed to be for me. Um I just, like I said, I've never been a person that really liked female dogs. Um, it was nothing really against Sally. It's just mine and Sally's personalities never really clicked. Um, I, don't get me wrong. I love Sally to death now, but she's definitely more suited for him than she is me. So we were talking and I was like, you know what? I think I want a red bone. And we found Doc, drove to Indiana, and that's how I got Doc. So I think the, I think the thing with Sally is, and it, you know, it's not like a shot at you or anything. But <coughs> she's more along the lines of she's okay by being by herself. I mean, she wants you know, she wants it to be me and her. Yeah. And I'm okay being by myself. You know, when it comes to hunting and all that stuff, there's really only like three people in this world that I like, and. Uh, you know, one of them's in his car, so I've always kind of just been, you know, before me and Jay got together, um, it was always usually just me. Uh, I worked three to eleven shift. I've always had a dog, you know, it was me and Zeus, uh, my my house dog. Uh, he's not really a house dog, but he stays in our house. Uh, it was always just me and Zeus. So when Sally, when we got Sally, and Sally kind of, you know, displayed that kind of temperament and I would say the attitude, but just kind of that, you know how she was she wanted to she was she did better when it was just me and her and i'm not like that i'm a crackhead i'm hyper i'm energetic i think that's why me and my dogs get along so good because doc nobody i know none of you all have ever hunted with him but he is a crackhead he's wild he's wild reaper he's the same way shadow he's the same way like it's just you know, mine and Sally's energies didn't really click. Like, we get along great now. I mean, 
you know, anytime she sees me or I see her, you know, she gets excited and all of that. But for her to actually be my dog, I just don't think, I don't think it would have worked out. Yeah. So, and also something I want to mention about um, Pete, your dad has told me, is that that dog had a head on him like basketball, I think so. your dad described it. Yeah. He said, I mean, he has a big old blocky head, big stock. And he said, you know, just big dog. And, you know, that that fits the script for not only what we like, but you described Doc Holiday. I mean, he's 80 pounds. I mean, he's solid, solid dog, big head. Um, and he's an absolute kill dog. So Dad said that Doc sounds a lot like the way Pete used to. So, I don't know. I think... I think Doc was kind of sent down from heaven to me, honestly. Uh, I know now some of you might not believe things like that, but I don't know. It's just me and Doc, from the moment I got him, it was just like this instant bond that we had. And, I mean, we still have it to this day. He sees me and goes ape shit. I mean, he's so excited. Well, I don't know if any of you have seen the pictures I posted on Facebook of me and Doc. Uh, the pictures I took of Herc and Matt, they were clear and really great pictures. And then there's me and Doc, him being a crackhead and knocking me over, wanting to lay on top of me and cuddle. And that's just, that's just him. So, I don't know. So, yeah, that's why I got Doc. Um, Reaper. I got Reaper. So, the Reaper story is kind of funny. I saw Reaper posted as soon as he was born. I mean, I wanted a dog off that litter, but I did not want to pay the price. How much, how much were they originally posted for? I don't remember. I want to say 1500 And I know that's not, like, super expensive for a pup but that's pretty expensive for an eight week old puppy yeah but you know what i mean like even even in your like big name dogs like even your big name walker dogs a lot of them aren't aren't that expensive you know as an eight week old pup i want to say that it was like fifteen hundred dollars it's not that i'm cheap it's just it makes me nervous to pay that much for a pup even though Reaper's bloodline is great. I just... I'm a believer in the whole... Just because they have a great bloodline doesn't mean they're going to make a great coon dog. Um, so, I don't know. I just... I didn't want to spend that much money on a dog that... I might not keep because... It's not the kind of caliber of dog I want. So, time went on and time went on. And he just kept popping up like week after week after week him and his brother and finally it popped up one day and you know the price had dropped and I commented on it I was asking for info I texted Matt or called him and I was like hey you know those puppies I've been wanting they dropped the price can we please get one of those pups and luckily I got one of the puppies um the guy that got his brother so, the post was only up for, what, five minutes? Yeah, Maybe. Something like that, yeah. And the guy that got his brother got him before I did. So, that's <laughs> how high demand these dogs were. Like, a lot of people wanted them. Um, luckily. I told, I told her that, you know, we <clears throat> if we could, we probably ought to buy both of them. Yeah. Like, just because we had been talking about them. Um, and I don't think I don't think you were telling me about the bloodline, but we had talked about the bloodline in the past and knew that they were not only desirable dogs, but you know they should they should be good dogs. Right. So Reaper's bloodline. Um, his grandpa is G Man. Uh, G Man is a platinum champion. He just recently won two time best of breed or breed winner. 
something like that. Um, he qualified for World this year, but I saw a post that T Mac uh, posted saying that G was sick, so I don't know if he'll be going to World or not. He's like eight years old. Yeah, he's he's older. Um, and then his grandma is Callie. I don't know her official name. I do, but I don't know it off the top of my head. She was a gold uh, champion. She was a really, really good dog. Like I said, I don't know a whole lot about her. Um, I didn't know a whole lot about her, honestly. Even when I went and got Reaper, uh, I talked to the guy that bred, and he was talking about how much thought he put in this bloodline, and then I was like, you know what, I really want to know more about this Cali dog, and I found stuff out, so um, they bred them and got Bounty Hunter. Bounty is a Grand Knight. Uh, he's a Grand Show Champion for yes. um, their mom her her name is oh gosh uh, PR Swords Carolina Charm yes. now she's never been comp hunted uh, the guy well their breeder actually had the mom that was his dog um, he he's a really cool guy I mean you know he was saying how great of a dog she was and you know I'm not that person that like I said there has to be all grand knights in their bloodline before I'll get them because just my opinion yeah they can have all grand knights but they can also be a dog that won't treat one coon ever in their life so we got reaper and he's kind of insane I mean now he's seven months old he's not training his own coon or anything like that but just his level of intelligence especially for a hound he's very very smart he picks up on things so quickly like you know the first time he went hunting he went what 40 yards yes. with doc and then he went 240 with doc and then he went oh god what do you how far do you go maybe i don't remember right off um I don't remember how far he went, but he just, he kept progressing and progressing, and he's only been turned out four times yeah. with older dogs, and this last time, he did go with Doc, um, this last time, though, Doc didn't wait on him like he usually does, he just blew out of the country, and Reaper tried to keep up with him, but he couldn't, so he started hunting the road, which a lot of people would have put their dog back in the box, but... He was honest to God hunting the road, like. And and when we say hunting the road, like we we were up the holler where we live, like. Yeah. Yes, this road goes through, but nobody ain't nobody gonna be going up through there at that time. No. So. Like he was going off the road hunting, and then he you know, so to me, as long as he's not just goofing off playing around, being a puppy, he's actually trying to find something to track. I'm okay with that. Um, he did recently show really great interest in a coon. Um, I'm pretty excited about that. I, uh, I really hope that he trees his first coon by the time he's nine months old. Uh, whether that happens or not, that's up to him. But uh, then I got Nellie, who you all don't know about. I'm not going to say a whole lot about her. Um, we filmed a video, a vlog, on her. Um, if you guys watch the um, the vlog from where we did the African safari thing in Columbus, Georgia, um, that's what we were doing in Georgia. Yeah. Uh, I think I mentioned it in that video. So um, that's kind of what we were doing in Georgia. That's, that's kind of that situation. Uh, but... We haven't really... We didn't even finish that vlog. No. Um, the actual vlog of getting her, we, we did not finish it. So, uh, we're kind of waiting a little bit. That's Jade's decision. Uh, like I said in the first podcast, um, technically, we both own Jet or uh, both own the Red Dogs. And both own the Black Dogs. But everything that happens with the Black Dogs is, is her decision. Red Dogs. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Red Dogs. <laughs> sorry. Um... Uh, 
everything that happened to the Red Dogs is her decision. Um, and I'm, it's not, it's not anything like she's a bad dog or anything like that. It's just, I, I think she's going to take a lot more time, and I just, there's I, really, there's I, really no point in me talking about her and then not really getting to show anything. You know what I mean? I think she's going to be a really, really good dog. She is by far the most athletic hound I have ever seen. Yeah, she's she, freakishly fast. She's fast. She's got a few quirks that needs worked out. But other than that, I mean, she... I think she's going to be something. And I think, you know... I'm just going. I'm going to say. It. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not. But I think a pup off her and Reaper is going to be insane. It's <laughs> so, going, going to be insane. <laughs> so that's my plan. Um, I plan on breeding Nelly with Reaper because of Karma's bloodline. Um, I don't want to breed Karma to Reaper because they both go back to G, and I just don't want to do that. So. I'm going to breed Karma to Doc, and then Nelly will be bred to Reaper. And then, hopefully, if everything goes good, I can take those two pups and breed them together and have the ultimate red dog. But, don't get excited. That's not happen- happening anytime soon. This is years down the line. Yeah, I mean, Reaper's seven months old, Karma's ten weeks old. I could bre- I could technically breed... Nelly to dock right now, but I'm not going to. Don't get your hopes up. That's not going to happen. Um, I don't want to overbreed my dogs. Nelly will more than likely be bred maybe twice Yes. in her lifetime. Um, I'm not that person. You're getting into a whole other podcast. That's going to breed their dog all the time. Okay. So, anyway, you want, do you have anything else to say about you know why you hunt them and your current dogs and all that? Or ready to um i don't know i just i hunt the red dogs just in memory of my papa i guess um i would like to get a red tick eventually i might actually name him john i don't know we've had so many red ticks that we were like let's buy that dog i know it's almost like i'm not meant to have a red tick because i mean we've had gyps come across you know in front of us opportunities to gyps we've had you know male dogs and it's just always fell through. Yeah, it just it's falling through. Uh, which don't go this wrong. We're not pursuing a red tick. No. But there's been three or four or five different red ticks that I mean we're like, man, we like that dog, you know. We might buy that dog in the future and then we've just either something's come up or we haven't had the kennel space or we have we've been where we've just invested a bunch of money, whether we've, you know, bought a pup or we redone our kennels or something along those lines where we don't want to spend that money right now and that's kind of where it's coming and like she said it's almost like we uh just not meant to have one so uh you might see one eventually you might not we don't we don't know that's kind of just let that let that be what that bees let that be what that bees <laughs> okay so i think i'm done talking about why i hunt what i hunt now all right so quick question for you me Yes. Okay. What is the three things that you think are important? The first three things to do with your, your coonhound puppy when you get it. Bond. Bond's first. Crate train. Crate train. Hmm. Get them used to the scent of a coon. Get them used to the scent of a coon. Yeah. All right. For me... My first three things are, like you said, Bond and Craig Crane. My third, because this is what I did with Hercules and what I did with Izzy, is leash breaking. Leash breaking is up there too, but so what I do with my dogs, um, the bonding thing, that's super, super important to me anyway. I just feel like if you have a dog that loves you and respects you, they're going to work a lot better for you than they will with someone that they fear or just don't really like. Uh, he's the same way. So, oh, sorry, I had to hiccup. Uh, <laughs> to me, bonding is definitely the most important. 
um, crate training. I think everybody should crate train their dog, house dog, coon dog, whatever. I think they should definitely be crate trained. Just for the simple fact, if you ever plan on competition hunting, you're probably going to have to stay in a hotel at, at some, some point. point. You're going to have to stay in a hotel. Most hotels require you to put your dog in a crate. I mean, not even so much as that. Um, I'm not leaving my dog in a dog box all night long. No. I don't. I mean, if you do that, you know, that's all more power to you. That's your choice. It's whatever. But it is not hard to break into a dog box. And the truck we have is a 2001 Ford Ranger. It does not have a locking tailgate. So I cannot put my dogs in there, lock my dog box, lock the tailgate. Uh, and honestly, the dog box we currently have, which we are going to get a new dog box soon, uh, but it's got to slam latches. So I can only run a padlock on that. You know, a cordless grinder or a pair of bolt cutters, and you have full access to my dogs. I can't lock my tailgate. I can't really securely lock my dogs up. So I want them in the room with me. I want them as close to me as possible. And they're nice enough dogs that they're probably going to go with you. Yeah. I mean, uh, really, the only dog that I would probably be worried about, probably Hercules. Yeah. Not because Hercules is ill or anything, but, you know, if you go sticking your arm in his dog box and he doesn't know you, I mean, I don't know what he's going to do. Because he's not big on somebody being in his space. Right. Except for us. Oh, yeah. I can. I can. I mean, and don't get me wrong. Like, he's not a mean dog. I can go up take food from him. I do it every time. Uh, I take his food from him, mix it up or whatever, however I want to mix his, his food up. I mean, he's perfectly fine with me. And guys, if you watch the videos, I promise you, promise you, promise you, Hercules is not trying to bite me when he rolls his head back on the tree. It's kind of one of those things like, Dad, I got one, Dad, I got one. Like, he's excited, I'm petting him, he's looking at me. and it's, it's He's not trying to bite me. I know what it looks like that because I thought it in the videos, like, man, it looks like he's going to bite me. But he's not trying to bite me. So I just want to mention that. But that's that's one of the the bigger reasons why we create we suggest crate training. But two, uh, and why we crate train our house dogs and all that is guys, that is their space. So if you crate train your dog, you give your dog whatever size crate, whatever. And we'll go into a little more detail on you know your first initial crate for you know your dog. But if you crate train your dog and you have that dog in that one crate that is that dog's and I, I hate using this term because the leftist liberals use it but that is your dog's safe space safe space it's their bedroom that's where if they get overstimulated they get you know whatever they can go to that place that's theirs and that's how it should be. It should be their, their space um, where they can go and be by themselves if they need to be. So, you know, like Zeus. Zeus is a perfect example. He does not do well with um, people when they come to the house. He's not mean, but he, he has anxiety. And I don't know why. He was never like this until I bought my house. But when I moved off the farm, Zeus developed anxiety. Um, you know, you, you, you could probably, you personally, whoever you are listening to this, could come over to our house and I could have Zeus out and it would probably be okay. But if you bring your buddy and your buddy brings his buddy and his buddy brings his buddy, Zeus is going to be shaken. Yeah. Zeus is going to be, he's, he's going to be anxious. He's going to be shaken. He's going to be uncomfortable. He's going to be freaking, freaking out. Freaking out. He's going to be wondering where I am. Yes. It's very long as just a shadow he's very protective of jade so we give him that space that crate is his that's his safe space that's where he can go when he's overstimulated and oftentimes we leave the door open for him he will go in there on his own whether you know just to lay down and play with his toys or eat or whatever and you should feed your dogs in their crate yes so that kind of another thing more along the lines of the house dogs but you know it's good to keep your hounds up to date on it on crate training 
like we try to bring the the hounds in one at a time every six months or so uh, to keep them up to date on it you know as a, like a refresher um, but you have anything you want to say about it as um, far as just reasoning in general so we keep whenever we get a new dog whether it's a puppy whether it's a 12 year old dog which has never happened but right just the age difference um they stay in the house for the first two weeks sometimes longer if they do really good sometimes less if it, it they depends do not on, so good it depends on the dog usually a week minimum yeah they stay in the house a week minimum um i think reaper stayed in the house for what a month and a half yeah i mean but he's the best town we have when it comes to crate training Yes. He has never used the bathroom in the crate, except for maybe when we first got him. He doesn't bark in the crate. I mean, he just, he's great when it comes to crate training. Um, but that's what we do. We keep him in the house. And I am i don't let puppies run around in my house <laughs> unsupervised. Uh, yes, that's a bad idea. That's... I know a lot of people don't like crates because, you know, it's rude and dog abuse or whatever you want to call it, but... It's really not, though. If you're letting your dog run loose, especially a puppy, puppies get into everything. Everything's a toy. Everything's food. I'm not going to say that there's not something laying on the floor or on a table or something they can get that's going to hurt them. Yes. I mean, that's... Not, don't think I'm like unclean and don't clean my house. It's just, I don't know. I feel like there's going to be something somewhere that they're going to get into and then. Well, for example, with my job, which I don't wear my boots, my work boots home for this reason. But if I wear my work boots home um, and I deal with a lot of acid, a lot of uh, corrosive acids, uh, sulfuric acid, hydrofluoric acid, um, HF acid, which is uh, there's hydrochloric and there's hydrofluoric. Hydrofluoric is a calcium attacking acid. Um, it's one of those things where if you get it on you, you're probably not, it's not going to burn. It's going to eat through your skin, eat the calcium out of your bones, and it's going to kill you. So it's one of those things where, like, um, if I was to say I accidentally stepped in some, you know, water that the pH wasn't wasn't neutral you know it had an acidic ph and that's on my boots i come home i leave my boots in the floor puppy goes over starts chewing on my boots because that's what puppies do what are the odds of that dog surviving that slim very very slim um, and another thing we have the air wicks yes in our house um if a dog chews on those probably gonna die <laughs> um chewing I, don't, on, I don't know like the chemical like i don't know but it's probably not safe to ingest well and, so and, and like we're also we're along the lines like we don't want our dogs to have anything other than like treats and dog food yeah like really the only opportunity that our our dogs ever have to have anything other than you know treats or dog food is honestly when they treat they start treating coons if they start treating the other dog and it's, it's shootout season or we picked up roadkill or something something for them to have we will let them sleep with it overnight that's a whole different topic whole we're way ahead of ourselves yeah that's about the only time we allow our dogs to have anything other than dog food or treats and oftentimes they don't actually eat the dead coon yeah izzy will because that's izzy but a lot of times they just chew on it, they play with it, they cuddle it, whatever. That's a whole different subject, but that's just you're controlling their their environment a whole lot better, and it's a whole lot safer environment when you have them confined to a controlled space. And it helps with uh, housebreaking. Absolutely. Um, there's probably going to be a time, even if you don't have as many dogs as us, that your coon dog comes in the house. A um. uh, perfect example of this, uh, when we had to bring Sally in. So, when Sally got diagnosed with Lyme and Ehrlichia, uh, 
we <laughs> we knew because the re- or we found out because she was favoring her back leg. It was swollen. She wasn't putting any weight on it. We thought she'd broke it. Took her to the vet. Turns out she had a spider bite. So with that spider bite, it created an open wound. And the vet said, you know, you need to bring her in the house where you can keep it clean and all that. She was in heat. We have three boy dogs in the house. Yeah. That is the perfect example of, you know, what am I going to do? You know, if none of my dogs are crate trained, how am I going to manage that? Yeah. So, that was just an example. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just... Or just, <clears throat> you know, when hounds get older, most people bring them in the house if they don't already have them in the house. Um, honestly, if we had a bigger house, all of our dogs would probably be in the house. That's Even the hounds. Dogs. That's a lot it's of It's a lot of dogs, but I feel like we're definitely those people that... We'd have to give them their own level. Each yeah. Coon have dogs, their own room. Coon dogs would be in the basement. House dogs would be on the, the middle floor, and we'd have upstairs to ourselves or <laughs> right? something like that. But it's actually not a bad idea. Don't know. That's not happening. It might. No, it's not. It but might. It might. anyway, I don't know. I just I think people should crate train their dog. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about crate training. Now, getting them used to the scent. So I don't I don't know anybody else that does this. Other than me. Uh, well, it's not a, a big topic that a lot of people talk about. Um, I've, I've never asked anybody. I So, if you've ever trained a puppy, or maybe you've trained a puppy and this has just never happened to you, but with training puppies, a lot of... I've noticed this a lot. Um, they get really excited to see the coon or the hide, but then they smell it. Yeah. And they're like, what is this smell? Sometimes they're like, eh, whatever. Other times they're like, I, I don't know about this. So what I do... And this kind of goes along with great training also. Is you have to have them confined to a, a smaller space to do this. Yeah. Um, when they're in their crate, I give them a stuffed toy. And I put coon scent on it. Now, that doesn't make the house smell great all the time. Or the puppy smell great. Which it... But... It, it's not that bad. I mean, it's not like we're soaking it in coon scent. I mean, no, it's, it's a, you know, you want to be moderate with it. You want to progress with it where, you know, if your dog is a little bit uncomfortable with that smell, you don't want to over sensory overload them with that with smell. With that smell, yeah. Give them a drop on that toy. Right. Which is what we'll be doing with Karma when we get home. I'll set her crate up and I already have a stuffed toy for her. I will put a drop, maybe two one on each side of that stuffed toy and she'll play with it um it might not do anything i don't know i don't see how it could hurt but to me it's just if you get that puppy used to that scent as soon as you get them and then keep progressing and pre- progressing you know if they're used to a stuffed toy and then they see a coon hide they're gonna see it as a toy yes. they're gonna want to play with it they're gonna be interested in it and then you progress to you know a dead coon which is what we do it's a toy. They want to play with it. You know, they're just, they're interested in it. And I don't know. That's just, that's just me. Uh, leash training is definitely up there too, though. Um, and I want to, I want to make a comment on what you said. You know, all this needs, needs to be and has to be done in moderation. Yes. So when you do introduce them to a live coon, it needs to be in moderation. Because like we said, they think it's a toy. They've never had one that moves and growls and bites and scratches. Which so, is usually where the barking comes in. Yes. But it needs to be... And there's no set point for when to do this. No. There's no set point for when to show your dog a coon. It all depends on the dog. It all depends on your dog. I mean, there's some dogs that... Some puppies that can see a live coon at eight weeks old. And they're going nuts. Now, don't take that as your... That dog's going to be this great, amazing dog. Because it might not. Zeus will hammer... Zeus will lock down and hammer on a cage coon like you've never seen in your life. I let that th- I let that coon out of there. That dog was gonna be tail tucked and running for me. Yeah. So. I mean, and don't don't think that's me knocking people that do show their dog a cage coon when they're little. Um, I've just never done that. Maybe I might try it in the future, but 
We, well, we haven't had a dog that's been that confident. Uh, yeah. We haven't had a pup, you know, and I know that's where a lot of you Walker boys come in where, you know, oh, well, my Walker dog was, you know, barking on a cage coon in three months. Cool. I don't care. I'm not super big on that early starting thing. But just because your dog is an early starter doesn't mean your dog's going to be a good dog. Right. And that, we're getting we're going to get off on a rant on that too, but like Smoky 7 dogs, 12 weeks old will bark on it. most of them. I've seen several different litters of Smoky 7 dogs that will bark at a, a, a cage coon at like 12 weeks old. That shot dog, that red bone. Yes. He was barking. He was treeing. At what? Was it like 10 weeks old in that video? I, yeah, I don't remember. But And Shot is a good dog. Don't say it. We're not saying Shot's not a good dog. but No, Shot's a very good dog. So, if the guy that owns Shot, because I don't know who you are, is listening to this, I do really like your dog. Yeah. But, um, okay. So, before we go off on a rant about dogs and bloodlines and all that. Um, guys, I think lease training... <clears throat> wow. I think lease training is, you know... I think it's up there for me because, um, like I've said, you know, in the past, we're from Appalachia. Like I said in the first video, we're from Appalachia. We're from, I wouldn't necessarily call the mountains. We're from an area where the elevation of terrain, I guess you'd say, can change 200 feet and go up or down 200 feet in less than 100 yards. That's pretty steep. Um... And I don't want a dog. A lot of these hills are have that shell shell rock on them. That's super slippery, breaks really easy, and all that. Or the underbrush is so thick you can't see ten feet in front of you. I don't want a dog dragging me all over that. So I want them. I want to leash break my dogs as soon as they're ready. I mean, you know, some dogs you can leash break at six weeks old. Some dogs you can't leash break till they're, you know, 16 weeks old. But when the dog shows that it's ready and all that, I want that dog leash broke and I want to be working on handling from the get-go. That's it. I The only thing, the three things I'm worried about when I get a puppy is I want to form a bond with it. I want to form a very strong bond with that puppy. I want it to crate train them. So if I ever have to bring them in the house, it's not something I'm worried about. And I want them to handle. I want to be able to handle that dog like it's, you know, this great canine obedient, you know, off leash type of dog. That's how dog that's kind of the standard that I set for my hounds when I, you know, decide out what I want how I want them to handle. Will they do they ever handle that good? Probably not. Because, you know, as we as they get older we transition more into other training ex- aspects but that's 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 it for me that's the three things that i think are the three foundations of starting your kundal and for me i would swap leash and scent training like you do with yours i would swap them i put leash at three and scent at four that's just something i guess i consider it number three because it's something i do immediately like oh and don't get me wrong like that's i'm okay with that like that's something i'm gonna do i mean i I did it with izzy and reaper right and you know that's i'm totally fine with that it's just i think if i had to pick three the first three things i would do is the bond crate and leash training i don't know i guess i guess the scent training doesn't really have to be up there because I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just I'm just saying that's for me that my opinion that's that's it. Well, no, I'm saying like okay, so as soon as we get home with Karma, I'm gonna set her crate up. Well, I might give her a bath first. Should we talk about the divider, or should we wait and we just make a video on it? We'll just make wait and make a video. Okay. Um. So the first thing I do when. Well, the first thing I will do when we get home with Karma is I might give her a bath. I don't know. It's going to be midnight when we get home. It'll 12 four. It'll just depend on how tired I am. Um, but I'll put her in her crate. I'll get her toy out. I'll put the scent on there. And then I'll really try to bond with her tomorrow. 
Yeah. Like I said, it's going to be night when we get home. We're still in North Carolina. Yeah. We live in Ohio. <laughs> so, it's 8.18 p.m. It's already dark outside, which, that's crazy. I it's know. It's dark at 8 o'clock. Man, it's about to be the best time of the year. I know. But. But the only bad thing is, I'm going to be getting off work at 7 a.m. now. Yeah. And instead which, of 11 p.m. I mean, I guess technically I could go to midnight shift and we can hunt before I go to work. I'll date your days. No, nope, I ain't doing all that. Screw that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, any other comments or tips or advice you want to talk about or you got ready to wrap this up? Start hunting red dogs. <laughs> if, you can't ha- if you can't have a black dog, get a red dog. No. That's what you just said? Y'all heard her say it? No. She said it. I said start hunting red dogs. She said, "If you can't leave have leave the black dogs alone. If you can't have a black dog, get a red dog." No, I'm just kidding. I don't have anything against black dogs. And I really don't have anything against red dogs. I absolutely love Doc. Reaper aggravates me sometimes, but <laughs> I love him too. Um, I'll pack Doc any night of the week. I will. You give me that dog, I'll be happy with it. Would I miss my black dogs? I miss Hercules, Sally, and Izzy. Absolutely. Maybe not Izzy so much because she's a prick. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Izzy, but she is hell on wheels she yeah. is all or nothing 100 mile an hour everywhere she goes and she might be a 100 a minute chop dog because every time I, i've been down play with sally or something because her kennel is right beside she gets belly up on the kennel and she's like 100 a minute in my ear and it's a little bit obnoxious but i would definitely miss my black dogs but if i could have if you gave me doc holiday and said here's doc holiday he has an infant you know lifetime you can have him for your whole life and he'll never age or anything like that, I would be happy. You will never hear those words come out of my mouth. What's that? No. Oh, that I can have Doc? Yeah. I mean, technically, I'm uh, 50% owner on Doc, so... Doesn't matter. (laughs) Doc will always be my dog. He loves me so much more. Yeah. Well, all right, so if you don't have any other comments, you want to wrap this thing up? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say. All right, guys, so um, when this podcast goes live, it should be um, the third Wednesday of the month, which means we are still running the uh, giveaway for the tree shaker. So for every 25 tree shakers we sell in the month of September 2020, 2021, 2021, yeah, we will be giving one away, you know, no cost to you. So... And this podcast might not even get posted. Why's that? Because of the traffic and the noise. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm this far until we're, gonna, we're all going to post it. Really? Yeah. Okay. But, so, uh, for every 25 tree shakers we sell, um, I'll give one away free. Um, all you got to do is go to, uh, I'll have the website linked somewhere uh, in the description or whatever, and use use code RUT10 at checkout get y'all 10% off uh, that makes the tree shaker twenty two fifty before tax and shipping so it's only it's only uh, smaller we use um, and yeah that's it that's, that's what we like that's what we use um, it's been great for us I posted videos on it I'll probably do one more video on it this month uh, as like a bonus video like I did last time so if you haven't yet check them out um it's the Bayou Legacy uh, Tree Shaker. So that's it. I'm done. Jade, what's your what's your TikTok? I don't know. What's your What's your Instagram? I don't know. Hold on. Uh, you guys can follow me on TikTok and Instagram uh, at Rut Outdoors. Uh, R U T T Outdoors. Uh, oh. That was really loud. Um, Jade's Instagram is m.gillum21 and her tiktok is mckaylee jade spell it for him m-c-k-a-y-l-e-e-j-a-d-e there you go so give her a follow on tiktok um we've talked about it we haven't actually gone official with it but maybe if we hit you know if you guys can get us get my TikTok to 10,000 um, followers and our YouTube to 1,000 followers, 1,000 subscribers. And what's the magic number for you, Jade? I don't know. 5,000. 
So you guys get us, uh, get our YouTube to 1,000 subscribers, get my TikTok to 10,000 followers, and Jade's TikTok to 5,000 followers. We might do a giveaway for a Garmin TT15 or a light from Bright Ice. So we'll discuss that in the future. Appreciate y'all listening. Um, whatever you do with podcast, review, whatever, like, share, all that. Uh, we're new to this. At the time of recording this, actually, our podcast is live right now. It's been live for 24 minutes. Yeah, so. I wonder if anybody's listened to it. Probably not. Probably no, no one knows how to found, find it yet. I haven't posted anything about it. But, guys, we really appreciate y'all. I appreciate all the support. Listen to us ramble and all that. Maybe eventually we won't ramble so much. We'll get better at it. I feel like we did better with this one than we did the last one. Yeah. You, you rambled the most, though. It's, it's my ADHD. We're rambling right now about rambling. <laughs> guys, thank you, and we will catch y'all on the next one.